Hello, it's been a while since I drilled into Innovio because quite simply, they have gone radio silent once again after their Oppenheimer conference last month. Nothing, nothing is happening, there's no news and no updates. All we have had from Innovio is a couple of tweets on issues unrelated to what they're actually doing, which is trying to bring vaccines to the market. Innovio stock in the last month went up a monster 26% until the last week of trading where it has absolutely been pummeled right back down and we are right back at where we started. There has been one massive major SEC filing that we will discuss in this drill and we'll look at the current COVID situation in the world with a particular emphasis on China and what it could mean for Innovio moving forwards. Stay tuned for a quick drill and more. Well, 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 before we get in to the COVID situation in China, which is looking like a complete disaster zone, we need to first take a quick look at the recent SEC filing made by State Street. So on the 11th of April, we see that a 13G A filing was lodged with the SEC and as noted on the Innovio website, when we go to it, we can see that the name of the reporting person or entity is State Street Corporation. And what has happened is this. The shares has increased to 23.267 million. That is absolutely insane. And to gauge what that actually means, we go to Fintel and we can actually see right there on the 11th of April, literally four days ago, State Street lodged the 13G A and their previous shares was 13.3 million shares and it's been upped to 23 million, which represents a 75% increase in institutional ownership of the stock by State Street. And that translates to 10% of the company is now owned by State Street. Are they literally smelling something big in the water that is going to come very soon? I mean, quite honestly, when you look at the big three, BlackRock, Vanguard and State Street, they literally account for close to 23% of the company. Holy Jesus! I'm jacked. I'm jacked to the test! Good. With this additional purchase, State Street, by my calculation, is now the largest institutional owner of Innovio stock. State Street are no small fish in the market. And in fact, with them increasing their shares in such an unprecedented manner, gives me so much bullish conviction moving forwards for Innovio. Innovians, State Street clearly see the long-term future explosive growth that could be coming for Innovio. This makes me so bullish for the long term and I can literally see more institutions piling in in the very near future considering we have big news due this year and the stock price being almost at all-time lows in the last two years. Now just a side note, here's something I found extremely interesting and I'm left scratching my head. If you go to the Innovio website, you will see that they have updated their pipeline. But what is strange is that INO 4800 COVID-19 Innovate Trials for Phase 3 has suddenly been changed into internally funded. Well, well, well. But then there is an asterisk right here, which then means Ad Vaccine are funding 50% of Innovate Phase 3 clinical trial. So where is CEPI and where is the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation in this Phase 3? I don't think they exist anymore. It's only Innovio with Ad Vaccine, which means they are clearly riding 50% of their trial in China. Now, as with all new tech, and especially new biotech, we need more information out there so that people can start accustomizing themselves to change. Now, The Lancet is a weekly peer-reviewed journal that is highly regarded. And on April the 2nd of 2022, they released this article, DNA vaccines join the fight against COVID-19. This is very big. If The Lancet 
is producing an article such as this. And they go on to say, over one year has passed since the authorization of a first generation vaccines against COVID-19. Since then, 10 billion doses of COVID-19 vaccines has been administered globally. That is a phenomenal figure. In the current landscape of mRNA, viral vector and inactivated COVID-19 vaccines, one modality that has been largely underrepresented is DNA vaccines. And then in The Lancet, Akash Cobrigade and colleagues report an interim analysis of a phase three randomized double-blind placebo-controlled study of a DNA vaccine, Zycov D, against COVID-19. The vaccine contains a two milligram dose of DNA plasmid representing the Wuhan spike protein, which is delivered intradermally using a needle-free injection system. So, this is the Indian Zycov D approved DNA vaccine, and it's been proven to yield a vaccine efficacy of 66.6%. There was full protection against more severe disease and death. Based on the safety, immunogenicity, and efficacy findings from the phase three trial, Zycov D was granted emergency use authorization in India, which was a landmark milestone for DNA vaccines with potential to further distribute to the COVID-19 vaccine diversity and worldwide supply. Is this a future omen for Innovio to take over? Now, despite decades of research and development of DNA vaccines, including at least eight candidates currently in clinical trials for COVID-19, they have had limited success. One of the main challenges for DNA vaccines is the delivery. mRNA vaccines need to cross only one membrane to reach their site of action, the cytoplasm, whereas DNA vaccines need to cross the cytoplasm and the nuclear membrane. Because of this difference, the lipid nanoparticles that effectively deliver mRNA do not work as well for DNA. Historically, DNA vaccines have required a physical method of delivery such as electroporation or the needle-free injection system used in this study. Although these physical devices appear to be effective as shown in this study, they do pose a potential challenge for widespread use and scale-up. The device used in Cobrigade and Collie's study is small and portable and consists of an injector, syringe and filling adapter. It would appear that the stumbling block could be to do with the application device. So it's interesting to know that they do note the references for this article. And in item four, we see that they have referred to the INO4800 clinical trial phase one. Finally, we need to understand the situation of COVID in China has been absolutely on a tear recently with Shanghai and multiple other cities going into complete total lockdown. And why is that? It's because China has a zero tolerance for COVID-19, which means that they need to get to zero cases before they can unwind the lockdown. This is absolutely something that we will not be seeing in many other parts of the world. But what does it mean? I reckon that China are gonna push through many more vaccines, especially mRNA and DNA, which they do not have approved yet in China. And what does that mean for Innovio? Well, we know for a fact that at vaccine, working with Innovio are in clinical trials in China for INO4800. Even in India, we can see that the COVID-19 is still ravaging the country. On March the 8th, the Minister of Science and Technology, Wang Zhi Gang, said China also made progress in other technical routes such as an mRNA vaccine and a DNA vaccine, which are both in phase three clinical trials. Now we know right away that what he's talking about must be INO4800. And finally, I've just come across this. China releases its first autonomous intelligent robot for needle-free vaccine injection. Does that sound something like electroporation to you? And does that sound like what Innovio is doing with their Selectra? Well, 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 I leave that for you to chew on. Thanks for watching. And please note that I am still extremely bullish on Innovio to finally rise up sometime towards the end of this year and hopefully have a first commercialized product in the company's history, which should send shockwaves through the market and push the stock price right back up to where it ought to be for a company 
with so much promise and such a huge pipeline, can Inovio deliver? And will Dr. Joseph Kim come good? That remains to be seen. But hopefully, we will start seeing more evidence and news come out in the coming months. If you found this video informative, then do me a simple favor and subscribe to the channel, share the video, and get the word out there that Innovio is coming. I am a simple trader, and will simply see you in the next video.